Hey, Compose the Gloves here, and today we're going to talk about in the Sound and Synth Basics frequency response. Now, I actually have quite a few videos that I've discovered I sort of need to add to this series, so there will be more videos. Now, what is frequency response? Frequency response is, let's say you've got some white, oh, well, let's do pink noise. Pink noise is great for frequency response because it's equal energy per octave. Uh, but you may use white noise in this case, you know, it just varies. So what it is, is you shoot some noise. Let's say that I want to test the frequency response of my uh, microphone here. What I would do is, what did it, well, what is frequency response? Well, it is when you shoot um, equal energy of all your frequencies into a thing, what will it, what will it spit out? What will come out the other end? Will it boost certain frequencies? Will it cut certain frequencies? Will it leave them all where they're at, which is called a flat response, which is ideally what you want. We don't know. And so with the, so you test it. So you shoot some stuff into your microphone and record the output and whatever it puts out, that's the frequency response curve. In fact, let's go over here. Let's look up the sure 57 frequency response. Now with microphones, frequency frequency response gets a little a little weird with different microphones. Okay, so here's a frequency response of this microphone. You can see at 50 hertz it's cut, at 100 hertz it's also pretty cut. I also have this on a box in my room. Uh, and at 1000 hertz at now we experience a boost. This is called a presence a presence peak. And with microphones, it's kind of another topic, but this is a frequency response. Now, something you need to be aware of when you're going out and buying microphones, because this graph can be made to look like horribly misleading. They could uh, they could make the scale huge, like plus 10, minus 10, and that's not a professional graph. Will usually have uh, a 3 dB variation line, and so it'll variate that much within three decibels. Other other companies, you know. There could be huge dips in between some of the stuff that you just don't see. So you need to be aware of whether or not it's how much is coloring your signal. The 57 is one of the most popular microphones. I think it is the most popular microphone on like the planet. So uh, it's a great mic. So don't ever think twice about whether or not you should get one of these. I recommend you buy them. They're only 100 bucks and they're amazing. And you'll see them in every, you'll see them everywhere. Literally, there's like no sound application where they're not useful. The president has been speaking with these for like forever they use two of them because they've never failed they're that good so uh yeah so when you're doing frequency response you put in some frequencies of something that you know what it is like the kind of noise like pink noise or white noise so you know what to look for you see if what changes and then that's the frequency response it's important to note because this will color your signal and do all sorts of weird things it's like a natural eq and sometimes it's a really good thing sometimes it's a really bad thing now another thing with frequency response is Certain frequencies may respond differently than others. Oh, I'm thinking of a different graph. What frequency response should show the whole thing. However, you can have different frequency response in the case of like a microphone with off access noise. So if noise comes from this side instead of directly into the mic, what is the mic going to pick up? How does it pick it up now? And those are often drastically different. And the reason why cheap microphones are cheap is, is a lot of it's that. And why expensive microphones are the way they are. So that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have whoa, 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 whoa. One other thing you need to take away from this. Your speakers have a frequency response. Usually they're pretty flat, but crossovers in your frequency in your speakers, which you should be familiar with that from the multiband compression talking about bandwidth. So your speakers will split it up. So it goes into your lows and your highs. Your speakers have a frequency response. And so you are suffering from the coloration of your speakers or your headphones. This is super mega important. Like you need to listen to your mixes in the car, on different speakers, on all these things because of that exact reason. You want to get a variety of frequency responses to get input on your music and know what your and know what it really sounds like. So if you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. <laughs>